If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became the sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will rise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah they repented. And there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. Brent Petrie wrote this beautiful little book. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, there's the, the Case for Jesus. And uh, there's another one by a Chicago sports writer called The Case for Christ. And it goes through all the forensic evidence and it just shows how plausible it is to believe in Jesus. But uh, The Case for Jesus, Brent Petrie goes into a lot of the prophecies and, and different things that just point to the reality of Jesus. And in that book, he makes note of the story of Jonah. Most biblical scholars today would see Jonah as just kind of a, a made-up story. Um, there's no real historical roots to it at all. But Brent Petrie makes a separate case. And if you look at what it says when it said that Jonah spent three days in the belly of the whale, um, one would say, that's impossible. You couldn't stay alive because of all the acids in the stomach for digestion and all the rest. And so they look at it from a cold, hard, scientific reality. Now, God could super intervene and, and obviously protect him with some kind of force and miraculous way. He could have done that. So, but Brent Petrie looks at the Hebrew, and basically a better translation, he argues, would be, Jonah spent three days in Sheol. In other words, Jonah died, and three days later, he was brought back to life. And so when Jesus says, I give you no other sign than the sign of Jonah, it's a direct correlation to his own three days in the tomb, in Sheol, as the Hebrews, Hebrew translation of that story implies, according to Brent Petrie. And so... It really is um, important for us to do our best to remain open to what is true. Paul, in that first reading, was talking about this particular passage in the scriptures, and he himself was using historical events and then allegorically interpreting them. And so there's other ways to allegorically interpret some of the Old Testament scriptures as well. For example, when Isaac was carrying the wood on his back up to be sacrificed, it's like Jesus carrying the wood on his back to be sacrificed. The only difference is that God spared Isaac and he loved us so much that he let his own son die for our sake. Faith is a gift. There's no two ways around it. It's a choice. But what does that choice lead to? It leads to our striving to treat others as we would like to be treated. It leads to us thinking not of ourselves but of other people. It leads us to try and practice self-control and discipline in a virtuous life for God's glory. So, my brothers and sisters, let us just pray that, that we can really recognize um, how important it is to not be hard of heart, to not be cynical, in scholarly circles, one of the modes of interpretation is called the hermeneutic of suspicion. In other words, 
you assume everything you read is not necessarily true. In fact, you do all that you can to try and interpret it in a way that, that calls it into question. And we need an openness. But let us apply that hermeneutic of suspicion to this new way of interpreting things. Let us say maybe they're all wrong about that. Let us pray that we, yes, objectively discern what's true, good, and beautiful, and we are honest about trying to gain deeper and more insight. But let us not be quick to believe the craziness of the world, the craziness of the world that, that just does not accept objective science and fact and common sense. Let us pray that God will inspire us to do what we might, to just be open, and also to share the truth of the gospel to those we meet. And to continue, like that leper in last Sunday's gospel, to come back to God and give him thanks, which is what we're doing today. That's why we go to daily Mass, right? Just to say thank you to God for all that he's done for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We pray for the church, that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples, we pray to the Lord. For all nations throughout the world, that they may know and serve the common good and not be motivated by greed and self-interest, we pray to the Lord. For Todd Winnick, Winsick, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. For more vocations to the priesthood, religious life, faith-filled marriages, and the dedicated single life, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are suffering in any way, in difficult situations, circumstances, psychological challenges, whatever that might be, that God console them and give them hope in their life and in their situation, we pray to the Lord. For an end of the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Indeed, we pray that all corruption in our world be uncovered and those responsible for it lose their power and be replaced by leaders who respect life, religious liberty, and all that's in accord with natural law. We pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life.